Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking at how we can actually install Home Assistant OS on a Raspberry Pi and then connect to the Wi-Fi network on boot up. Now the usual mechanism is that you actually install the Home Assistant OS on a SD card, insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and connect the Raspberry Pi to a router using the LAN cable. Now in this mechanism we will actually install it on the SD card and then on boot up on the Raspberry Pi it will automatically connect to the Wi-Fi. Now for this setup you will require either an Ubuntu system or a Windows system. I was not yet able to figure out how to do this using a Mac OS but still you will be able to connect it to the Wi-Fi after booting up. So make sure you check out the end of the video wherein you will get to see how you can do this using the Home Assistant interface. So now with this we will look into how we can do the entire installation, how we can do the Wi-Fi setup and then start off Home Assistant. So with this, let's get started. So this is the SD card that I have right now. And using this SD card, I'm going to install the Home Assistant OS. For this, what we need is a software called as the Raspberry Pi Imager. So let's go to our browser here and we're going to search for the Raspberry Pi Imager. Now here in the Raspberry Pi uh, com, you'll find this Raspberry Pi OS and here you can download uh, the imager and now this is only the imager with which we will actually write the OS onto the SD card. Now depending on the system that you have, you need to download the appropriate binary. So now I have an Ubuntu system, so I'll download this binary. If you have a Windows, you can download this one and if you have a Mac OS, then you can download this one. Okay, so after downloading and installing this, I have this already set up. So I'm going to open this and this is how it looks like. So what am I going to do now here is I'm going to first of all insert this SD card. So I, I'll put this in this adapter here and then what I'm going to do is put it in my system. So now it's already there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose the OS. Now when I'm choosing this OS, I have to select the or other specific purpose OS. So thin clients, 3D printing operating system. So you will find it in this section. You'll have to scroll a little bit and you'll find it in this section. So once you go in here, you'll find this home assistant and home automation. Click on that and then here you'll find home assistant. Click on this one. Now here there are various variants. So you will get the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 3. Now we have here a Raspberry Pi 4. So this is the Raspberry Pi 4 in the case. So it looks a little bit big, but this is a Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm going to select Raspberry Pi 4 and then I'm going to select the storage. So now this is the internal SD card that I have. So it's a 32 GB SD card that I uh, have right now. Even a 16 GB would work, but probably I think you should have at least 16 GB of uh, the memory card. So I'm going to select this and then finally I'm going to say right. So it's going to ask you for a confirmation. So you say yes and enter the password. So now this will actually start writing the Home Assistant OS onto your memory card. Um, so this will take a little bit of time. So let's go to the end. So now this has completed and it has written uh, the Home Assistant OS onto the SD card. So now when I press continue, this will actually eject the card for me. Now after writing this particular OS, the simplest way to actually connect to the network is by connecting the LAN cable. But if you want to connect it using the Wi-Fi, then this is the setup that you will have to do. So now what we are trying to do is after installing the Home Assistant OS, we need to give it credentials to our Wi-Fi, right? Now this is possible to do in a Ubuntu system as well as on a Windows system. But doing this on a Mac system, I haven't still figured it out how to do it because I'm not able to mount the drives that gets written onto the SD card. So I will show you right now how we can do it using Ubuntu. If you want to look at how you can do this using Windows, you can skip to the next chapter. And don't worry for the Mac OS users, you, there is a way how you can actually connect to the Wi-Fi, but this is using a LAN port. So now let's actually start off with uh, how you can do this here. So let me reinsert the card. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open my terminal. So I have this terminal. 
and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run the command sudo fdisk minus l. Now this will actually show me all the disks that are available. Here what I'm going to do is if you see this Microsoft reserved device here, I'm going to mount this. So for this, copy this device and then afterwards type sudo mount and I'm going to give it a location mount slash ha. Now remember that this location needs to be like a folder at this particular location in your Ubuntu system. If you don't have a folder at this location, create a new one and then use it here. So I'm going to specify this here and I'm going to press enter. So now this device is mounted at this particular location. What we are going to do now is we are going to actually go into this particular file system. Now, if I open this CD this and open here, if I try to create a folder, it's not going to allow me here because this is mounted using the root permissions, right? So for this, what we are going to do, we are going to use the command line. So here, what we are going to do now is we are going to actually create a directory called as config. Remember, we need root permissions. So sudo mkdir config. Okay. Once we go inside the config folder, we are going to create another directory called as network. Now we'll go inside the network directory. And now what we are going to do using the VI editor, we are going to create a file called as my network. Now this my network file will not have any kind of extension, just a file name called as my network. So I'm going to press enter here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert some configuration here. So what you'll have to do is copy this particular information from here and I'm going to paste it. here. Okay. So this particular configuration, I will provide it in my blog. Uh, which will be linked into the description below. So you don't have to screen walk the entire thing and then write it. So here what I'm going to do is I'm give, I'm going to give it my Wi-Fi name. So I'm going to give it Wi-Fi SSID and I'm going to give it the password of my Wi-Fi. Now these are not the actual SSID and the password for my Wi-Fi but off the screen, I will fill them and then save it into this file. So once you do this, I will save this using escape colon and WQ. You can see this here below. So this means it will write and quit this editor. So when you press this, now this particular file is actually present here. Okay. So this is all that you need to do in order to actually connect to the Wi-Fi. So now with this file being written, we will now unmount this particular drive. So let's go to the home directory first by typing cd tilde and then we are going to unmount this. So sudo umount minus l and the location of the directory that we want to unmount. So now with this, the drive has been unmounted. Now, this was how we did it in Ubuntu, right? Let's look at how we can actually do this on a Windows system also. So now on my Windows system, when I insert the drive, you have this has OS boot. Here I'm going to now create a folder called as config. And then I'm going to create a folder called as network inside this config folder. So we did the same thing on the Ubuntu system. We will now create this particular file. Remember that we don't have to give any kind of extension to this, just a file name without any extension say yes when it says you are not specifying any extension and then open this using notepad. Once you open this using notepad, what we are going to do is we are now going to actually copy this particular config onto this particular notepad here. So here now we are going to specify an SSID and we are going to specify the password in the PSK section here. So now off the screen, I'm going to actually fill in this particular correct Wi-Fi and the password here. So to set this up for us. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to insert this particular SD card onto the Raspberry Pi. So I have this Raspberry Pi here and I'm going to insert it. And let's start this Raspberry Pi. So it's all started. Now what we are going to do is we are going to wait for some time for it to actually boot up 
and connect to our Wi-Fi network. Now to know whether this device has connected to our Wi-Fi network, on the Ubuntu system you can run sudo arp scan to find the network interface for your Ubuntu system and then afterwards here it will specify you the interface. Copy this. We are going to run sudo arp scan minus l minus minus interface and we are going to specify the interface here. Now this is how you can scan for all the devices on your network using an Ubuntu system. Now if you want to do the same thing on a Windows system, you have to use a command arp minus a. Now this command is not available here on my system on Ubuntu, but this is available on Windows as well as Mac OS. So using this, you can scan for all the network devices and you can figure out which are the various devices that are connected to your network. Now, if you see here carefully, we see this IP address here and we see this Raspberry Pi foundation. Now, this is one of the Raspberry Pis that I'm actually running my home assistant. And the main thing is that I'm not running home assistant OS on it, but I'm running the home assistant container version. So I'm using Docker to run home assistant as a container into a Raspberry Pi. Now, if you're interested in knowing how you can run this, make sure you subscribe to this channel to see how you can set it up on a Raspberry Pi or any system that you want, wherein you can run the Docker image of Home Assistant on that particular system. So right now we are going to wait for this Raspberry Pi to boot up and actually connect to our Wi-Fi network. This will take a little bit of time. So maybe around two or three minutes or five minutes. If it goes beyond five minutes, then there is something wrong. Then what is best to do is just go behind in this video and see what you have missed. And with this, you can solve that particular issue. If you still cannot find any kind of problems, try to put a comment below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. So let's wait for it to be discovered. So now on scanning again, I see that I see another device here. So this is the Raspberry Pi that I'm running right now on the IP address 130. So I'm going to use this IP address and now open our browser. So in our browser here, I'm going to put this IP address and put 8123. Okay. Now this is our home assistant actually running from our Raspberry Pi. Now there is yet another URL that you could use is homeassistant.local with the port 8123. With this also, you can access the Home Assistant on your Raspberry Pi. Now this depends on if your network supports MDNS version. Now if not, this particular address will not be accessible and usually this takes a little bit of time. So once Home Assistant starts preparing itself, it will set up this particular location for you and then you can access it. So trying to access this particular URL may take a bit longer for you to access home assistant so since we are using the ip address we can actually directly use home assistant here so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait now for this to actually start up it will approximately take around 10 to 15 minutes to start up so let's pause the video here and fast forward to the next phase so now the home assistant is up and running it took approximately around 10 minutes i would say 7 to 8 minutes say consider for it to start up so if you see here, I could also access the home assistant using this particular URL here. That is homeassistant.local. Remember home assistant runs on the port 8123. So using this port, you can actually access home assistant. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to specify a name here and a username and I'm going to give it a password. And I'm going to create this. Next, I'm going to specify the name for my home assistant installation. I'm just going to call it as home. And then you can specify which location you are from. Click on detect and this will actually detect the exact location where this particular home assistant is running. Then you can set the, uh, the country so and the language and the time zone. Finally, you can then set the metrics here. So you can set whether you want Celsius or you want Fahrenheit. And finally, you can set the particular currency. Next. Here you can specify if you, you want to allow anonymously uh, some of the statistics for uh, running this home assistant. Right now I'm currently not allowing them. 
and then here now it's actually detected some of the devices so if you see at uh, this bluetooth symbol so this is the bluetooth actually from my raspberry pi actually and this oh, google cast that you can see this is actually my google home that i'm running as well as i uh, it is detecting a, uh, an android tv here as well as one of the uh, speakers that i have so this has already been detected and it will be present into your integrations page so once i click finish voila so we are actually right now on the start page for our home assistant and this is the dashboard that we can see right now along with this you can see the side menu here and this is the first view of your home assistant server so congratulations you have actually set up your home assistant server it's all up and running with the wi-fi being connected now for mac users who actually have reached to this particular screen using the lan port because they had to connect the lan to in order to have this connected to the network what you need to do is you need to go to the settings here and then go inside system and inside here in the network section you will have to go to this wi-fi section here you will scan for access points and then after searching for access points you will select that particular access point scroll down specify wpa psk and enter your wi-fi password and once you save this this will then connect to your wi-fi so this is how a mac user can actually now connect to the wi-fi using this particular setup if you want to have a sneak peek at how i've set up my home assistant on my other raspberry pi so let's look at this so i have this here so this is the dashboard of my home assistant that i'm running on the other raspberry pi and this one i'm running using docker so i'm running a container a docker container inside my raspberry pi so that i can also use that same raspberry pi to run different other applications so i'm also running a listener a custom listener that i created for this particular uh, home assistant that listens to actually events coming from home assistant and does something it's still a work in progress project but i can show you once i have something meaningful to show so if you want to learn about how you want to create such kind of a dashboard customize it do a lot of integrations don't forget to subscribe to this channel a lot of videos are going to come around us because we are going to explore a lot of things in this particular channel and most importantly it will be in more beginner friendly way i hope you like the sneak peek preview of my home assistant dashboard now we'll be making such kind of uis we'll be integrating a lot of entities so make sure you subscribe to this particular channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like this particular video till then see you in my next one